हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल एडुकोर्स सो वील कंटिन्यू विथ आर लर्निंग विच वी वेर डूइंग इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी वेर डूइंग द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड फील्ड्स एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ कुलम्स लॉ सो कुलम्स लॉ इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो आई विल जस्ट यू नो एक्सप्लेन यू कुलम्स लॉ एंड एंड इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर कुलम्स लॉ कुलम्स लॉ इन वेक्टर फॉर्म do a few examples of coulomb's law so that you know how to apply the coulomb's law in numericals so uh, i i'll just uh, you know start with a definition basic definition of coulomb's law what coulomb's law says it states that the force between two points charges varies inversely as the square of the distance between the charges and is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of the two charges and acts along the line joining the two charges what does it mean that let's say we have these two point charges and let's say charge on this point charge is q1 and on this charge is q2 and let's say they are separated by a distance r then what coulomb's law says is that the force is directly proportional to product of the charges q1 into q2 and it is inversely proportional to square of the distance between the charges so if we combine both of this let's say this is first equation and this is second equation if you combine both of this you will get f is proportional to q1 q2 over r square so and now if you replace this proportionality sign by equality sign you will get f is equal to k times q1 q2 over r square now what is k k is the constant of proportionality the value of k is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 9 into 10 to the power 9 is the value of k and if you put the values here right so you can put uh, so if if you see you can replace k by 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 over r square now what is epsilon not here is absolute permittivity of the medium permittivity of the medium means uh, you know if there are these two charges they are kept in a medium so every medium has a prop property now the inherent property of the medium which allows electric forces uh, electric field lines to pass through it is called electric permittivity you know it permits the electric field lines to pass through the medium so this epsilon not has a value equal to 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square okay so these are the values which you should remember and this is the coulomb's law now let's come to the vector form of coulomb's law so this is the basic coulomb's law so we'll have to rub it properly okay yeah so now if we see the vector form of the coulomb's law so how to write the vector form just see here if we have these two charges let's say we have a charge q1 here and this is another charge q2 here so this is q1 and let's say this is q2 now the vector which is which is pointing from first charge towards second charge is given as r21 vector the direction the unit vector from first to the the second is r21 vector okay and the unit vector which is to from from 2 to towards 1 will be written as r12 vector 
this is the r12 vector and the force acting on the second charge due to first charge is written as f21 vector and force on first due to the second charge is written as f12 vector okay now let's say if we write this coulomb's law in vector form we'll write f21 vector force on second charge due to the first charge is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 divided by r21 unit vector r21 or you know we can say that r21 square the distance between you know 1 and 2 r21 square into the direction direction will be r21 cap so what is r21 cap it is a unit vector which is directed from first vector towards second vector and we know that uh, when we have two charges q1 and q2 the force is acting on q2 from q1 and the direction is from 1 to 2 you know in this direction so this is how we write it in vector form and if we have to write it f12 vector this will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r12 square and the unit vector r12 cap so this is you know f21 vector and f12 vector this is how you write these two vectors in uh, vector form coulomb's law in vector form now let's go ahead Now, if we, uh, so what we'll do, we'll do a few questions so that we get accustomed to Coulomb's law. So the first question, you can see it on the screen. I'll just read it for you. So a free pith ball P of 10 gram carries a positive charge of 5 into 10 to the power minus 8 Coulomb. What must be the nature and magnitude of charge that should be given to another pith ball Q fixed 7 centimeter below the former ball so that upper ball is stationary? So what does this question mean is we have a free pith ball P here. Okay, so we have a free pith ball P here and the mass of this ball is equal to 10 gram. If we write it in kgs, we will write 0.01 kg SI unit. Now it carries a charge positive charge of 5 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. So Q1 is plus 5 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb this is the charge which this ball p carries what must be the nature and magnitude of another charge so there is another charge which is below this and what is the distance between them distance r is equal to 7 centimeter so we can write it as 0 0.07 meter okay we have to convert it into si unit so the distance is 0 0.07 meter below the former ball so it is below the formal ball former ball and this is a q uh, pith ball the another pith ball and it is at a distance seven centimeter from it now what we have to find the nature nature and magnitude of this charge so in what case it you know this charge is stationary so that this charge is stationary you see so that upper ball is stationary upper ball is stationary means p has to be stationary so if p has to be stationary what are the forces which are acting on p if i draw it here the free body diagram the weight of this p will be acting downwards and if we keep another charge q here so that there is a repulsive force between them so there is an electric force between charge q and p the coulomb's force which balances this weight then only this will be stationary now that means that q will have to have the same same uh, you know uh, charge as p means same uh, same po uh, same polarity as p so p has a positive charge so q will also have to have a positive charge so the charge what q has is a positive charge we know that the this charge will be positive so charge q will be positive now if charge q is positive so we have fe will be equal to mg so we get k times q1 q2 
over r square has to be equal to mg. So when we solve this, we know the value of k. This is 9 into 10 to the power 9 into q1. This is 5 into 10 to the power minus 8. q2, the value of charge q2, we have to find it here, divided by r square. So the distance is 0 0.07 whole square. This will be equal to weight mg. What is weight mg? 0 0.01 into acceleration due to gravity. Let's say g is equal to 10. We are taking the value of g as 10. The value of charge q2, if you calculate this, if you solve this, the value of q2 comes as 1.08 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. Okay. So this is how you solve it. So what is happening here? The weight of this ball, pith ball P, is being balanced by the Coulomb's force. Coulomb's force of repulsion. Why? Because it has to be in opposite direction as weight. And repulsion will only happen when P and Q will have same polarity. So P, if it is a positive charge, Q will also have to be a positive charge. So I'm sure you would have understood this question. So now let's try this second question, which is there. So what the second question say is a force of attraction between two point charges placed at distance d is f. So let's say we have a charge q1, another charge q2 and they are placed by a distance d, right? And the force of attraction is f, means f is equal to k times q1 q2 over d square. This is given. Now what the question says is that there are, you know, two charges Q1 and Q2, they are separated by a distance D and the force of attraction there is equal to F. So what we have written is F is equal to K times Q1, Q2 over D square. Now the question asks, what distance apart should they be kept in the same medium so that the force between them is 2F? So we have to find this new distance D dash between these two same charges Q1 and Q2 so that the force becomes 2F. So if we write the equation 2F is equal to K times Q1 Q2 over D dash square. We have to find the value of D dash. Now what you need to do, you need to replace the value of F from this equation in this equation. You will get 2 times K Q1 Q2 over D square is equal to K times Q1 Q2 by D dash square. You have to find the value of D dash. So K times Q1 Q2 gets cancelled here. So you will get D dash square is equal to D square by 2. So if you solve this, you will get, if you take, you know, square root on both the side, D dash will become D by root 2. So the new distance between the charges should be D by root 2. Okay, so now let's come to the third question. I'm sure you would have understood this question. So the third question. So what does third question say? We'll just read it out for you. So two charged particles having charge 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb each are joined by an insulated string of length 1 meter. So there are two charges which have same charge 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. They are separated by a distance 1 meter and then they are connected by a string. So, and the system is kept on a smooth horizontal table, find the tension in the string. So since there is, they are kept on a smooth horizontal table, there will be no friction here. So the Coulomb's force, because they are having the same charge Q and Q, and let's say they are separated by a distance R. Now the Coulomb force of repulsion will be equal to the tension in this wire, tension in this string. So T is equal to Coulomb force. So which is equal to K times Q into Q means Q square over R square. So the value of 10 cent T, if we put the values 9 into 10 to the power 9 into the value of charge Q is 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb divided by R square, the distance here is equal to 1 meter. So if you solve this, the value of the tension T is equal to 9.6.
3.6 10 to the power minus 6 newton i am sure you would you must have understood this question so so students i am sure you must have understood this so if you have liked our video please share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel we'll keep on learning new things we'll keep on uh, you know doing new concepts one by one and we'll cover the whole syllabus of class 11th and 12th so keep on watching our videos keep on visiting our uh, you know youtube channel and then we'll we'll be updating new new videos every week so keep yourself updated bye and take care have a very nice day